Chattanooga Nation Spraylock. I'm just see, this is you've got me discombobulated. I didn't mean to. That was you a need big a shoulder word. rub? No, don't, no, stop it. Way doggy. Can that be something? All right. Bad break. Okay. Oh, well. Welcome to Spraylock Nation to another glorious, idiotic day that we're having here. Uh, we've had so many flubs, it's not even funny this morning or afternoon. See, we're here, still doing it now. Yeah, at least you said Chattanooga right. I did versus the other time. I mean, it's what happens. It's what happens when you don't do these very often. You kind of get messed up again. Back to the podcast. <laughs> so we're here in Studio FF35, FL25, just to kick off the dipstick floor flatness floor levelness discussion that we wanted to uh, discuss a little bit about what it is you know things you can do to help out and in how our products of work within that floor flatness floor levelness excellent so for a layperson uh, that doesn't deal with it all the time those two terms sound a lot alike floor flatness floor levelness can you tell us exactly what you're talking about yes one's flat one's level no oh, well. <laughs> so the flat <laughs> The floor flatness is going to pick up all the undulations, so you get the, the waviness of, of a slab as you're going, you know, across the slab. The levelness is the pitch. Okay. So how much it, it might it might change from one side to another, or even the gap you might have in there. The gap will pick up the flatness, levelness is going to pick up your pitch. So floor slabs on the ground, you're going to get FFFL requirements sometimes. Elevated decks, you're really probably just going to pick up the floor flatness, because with the levelness there, you get deflection and everything else that goes on in it. And so they don't worry about the levelness on it, they're worried about flatness. So when you're looking at typical usages of them, mm -hmm. and what you can cite is like some mechanical rooms, spaces, you know, that are getting like thick set tile, which will pick up, uh, the adhesive will pick up some of that. Floor flatness, 20, levelness, 15. Okay. As far as number, and the higher the number, the better your flatness is, the better your levelness is. Okay. So when you get to general office, you know, carpeted spaces like that, 25, 20. Okay. Um, general warehouse floors, thin set uh, tiles. You're getting 30 to 35 on the flatness, 20 to 25 on the levelness. Then you get warehouses, which you're going to get to 45, 35, 50 sometimes. And then you get those wonderful places of doing robotics and whatnot that yeah. can get up to 100 or 150. Yeah, I never got to work on 150, but I, I worked on one 100 in my career so far. But uh, uh, I know you've worked That's on That's when you some... get some laser screens and all kinds of stuff out there. So. That is what floor flatness floor levels is and kind of what we're seeing as far as where it's at. But there's a lot of things that can go into it. There is a lot of people who just talk to the finisher about what he's doing, you know, and they're, they're burning it out and thinking that's helping them out. But if you really start looking at it, your screening process mm -hmm. has got a lot to do with it. So bull floats are going to get you, you know, to a certain point. You know, your pan floats, depending on when you're using those, are going to help or hurt you. Yeah. And then you're still troweling in there. Um, but, you know, that's, that's the major thing on it, but you start looking at what other things can happen into it. I'm going to kick you back to your, your ready mix days. Sure. If I was telling you I needed something, and we all know that flatness and levels can be done by how much that concrete shrinks. Yeah. So if I'm telling you, hey, Brent, Mr. Ready Mix guy, I've got a really high tolerance number. I've got to hit 50s and, you know, 45s and stuff. What can you do on your mix to help me out as a finisher? What would you? What could you do? Yeah. So all the basics of of really good uh, quality sl concrete slab construction come into play when you're talking about a mix design. You're going to want to look at things like minimizing paste content with the use of blended aggregates, uh, reducing your mixed water requirements with the use of, of water reducers, high range water reducers. Um, all of those considerations that you would normally do for low shrinkage concrete. In right. fact, uh, using shrinkage compensating materials, uh, either either the powders or the, the shrinkage compensating right. admixtures, all of those things come into play because as we've discussed in a previous video, that part of the curling and warping is is related to drying shrinkage of the yeah. slab. So, so you don't want that slab to, to, to move as it shrinks or you want it to minimize that. It's going to move some, but you want to minimize it. You mentioned warping and curling, and so there's other things that go into it, which is why. So if you're doing the testing on it, or you're a finisher who's getting it done, that the quicker they get on it, the better it is for, for, every, for that number to go in. So really, 20, first 24 hours before saw cuts happen, but no more than 72 hours, this test needs to be ran. And it's uh, the one that we used the most was a face dipstick. We're not being sponsored. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it was yeah. a pro 
at all. Oh, um, yeah. But you know, you, you kind of walk it and you, you, it picks up on it. So you want to do it there and it, walking across a joint or crack is going to change that. So you want to make sure that you're getting it done in there. Uh, what's that mean for like us? Yeah. You know, we talk to finishers a lot. They do ask that question and we've done some side-by-side -side comparisons of them burnishing it out versus what we give them. And our numbers are very consistent with them or sometimes they've even been better. Um, we're stopping them two to three passes short of them burnishing it out. And we've done a lot of a lot of that where we've done areas that we were going to be put at and the warehouse is behind us and two passes later they're burnishing it out, they're moving on, they're getting away from it. You know, but the curing aspects can come into that as well. So following the initial curing and immediate curing can help maintain that water so you don't get that plastic shrinkage that's that's creating some issues for you either. So it's really a whole process to this. It's not just, you know, burnishing it out is going to get it because sometimes you get that chattering going on there. Um, and it depends on when that finisher is getting there. And, you know, one thing that people don't think about, and I know with your ready mix, guys, you're always very, very consistent. Oh, of course. But having a four inch slump come out to the job site and seven inch slump come out to the job site is going to change. Yes. Which also means when that finisher is hitting it, it's changing its timing on it. Yep. And we all know you can't just miraculously jump from one area to another area as much as a test man would love that and like get off that. <laughs> yeah. You know, they can't do it, so they're having to come back across it. So there's a lot that goes on to this floor flatness, floor levelness. So while we don't, we get numbers designed out there, it's more than just hitting the finisher and going, you must meet this. Yeah. It's a process and working with everybody, getting good communication on the front end, what's expected and what can we do to achieve those. And good consistency, good consistency in the slumps, good consistency in the, the mixing time, all of those things all can play a part because you want that finisher to have something that they they can count on as far as set time goes. Uh, so those are really great points. And the one thing I want to I want to finish out this with is one we work really well. Two, the floor flatness floor levelness and the the profiling of it is not meant to assign blame. There is a lot that goes on with it. Something as simple as adding extra lights at, at, at nighttime can help that finisher see what's 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 there and what's not there. There's a lot that goes on to it. It is not just one person, but what that can do is when you're seeing, them, you're, you're seeing the reports come in, is changing what you're doing to achieve it better. Yeah. And that's really what the ultimate goal is. Yeah, and you, so you want to turn those reports around quickly to, before the next placement so that you can so make So you got to make adjustments yeah. you can. Okay, that's, that's so excellent. That's just a quick down and dirty of four flatness, four levelness. Uh, just take it from two dipsticks, give you a little bit of information. Like, subscribe, we'll see you on the next one. Thank you. Thank you.